Python, programming language. For the past five months, I've been learning how to make animations with it. But all this time, I was secretly doing it the rookie way, on easy mode, avoiding actual programming, especially one specific thing, nested loops, or a loop within a loop. I know, right? So I decided to make this video, which will force my lazy ass to learn about them, whether I want it or not. So here we are. Doing my research, aka just randomly watching YouTube, I came across this video from George Hotz. Thank you for joining me on Noob Easy Python Tutorials. Did you like my tutorial? <laughs> I watched it and didn't understand a thing. That opened my eyes to how much of a total noob I am. And being a noob hurts, mentally. So I said to myself that until I understand how this whole shebang works, I'm not allowed to quit or else I will forever be a noob. And I forgot to mention that this whole thing is supposed to sort numbers, these numbers, from lowest to highest. But at the time I didn't think this would be that much of a challenge. Well. I opened VS Code, it's a code editor, wrote down exactly what he had written down, and tried the best method of understanding something, looking at it. This got me stuck immediately. The logic wires didn't connect. So I decided to do the next logical thing and to make this more noob friendly. Instead of analyzing a loop in a loop, I started with just one loop. So this one should print out numbers from 0 to 3, but 3 is not included. So 0, 1 and 2. Wapow. Beautiful. Let's instead do for i in range 3 to 10. So this should print numbers from 3 to 10, and 10 is not included. So from 3 to 9. Wapow. Beautiful. Not even complicated. Let's create a new list and say that it's equal to this array. You can basically put a bunch of things inside of an array and separate them with commas. Most of my vocabulary. And so now, instead of for i in range 3 to 10, let's do for i in range length l, which means the length of this array. All the items here are numbered 0, 1, and 2, so it starts from 0. Boink! Beautiful. So now since this little i changes from 0 to 2, which can all indicate numbers of items in this array, I can say print whatever list item it currently is. So when this i is 0, it's going to print the 0th element, which is xd. Then it's going to loop back because it hasn't finished going through the whole length of this array. And once it loops back, the i will be 1, which means that now it will print the list element number one, which is Shrek, and then it will loop one more time because the length of this is from zero to two. So when i is equal to number two, it's going to be the last loop. And so the list item number two is this one. Yoink. Beautiful. At this point, I was able to understand this simple loop, so my confidence level reached an extraordinary high. And so I decided to introduce the second loop. Okay, pretty good. Let's go back to the first noob loop. So this prints from 0 to 3, and I can add another loop that loops this loop, which means it will repeat this one for a few times. I'll say 4i in range 5. By the way, this indentation matters. So the first loop houses the second loop. The second loop houses the print command. So now it should print numbers from 0 to 2 5 times, since this loop does something and this loop repeats this loop 5 times. And it's going to print 0 to 3 for 5 times. Yoink. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> and then I decided to unnecessarily add some more confusion. What if we do for i in range from 5 to 10? So technically it should loop this loop for this amount of times, which in this case is 4 times since 10 doesn't count. So it should print out 0, 1, 2 for 4 times. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh? Never mind. Maybe 10 does count. Or maybe 5 counts. Wait, so it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, that is 5 times even if you don't count the 10. So it ran this loop for 5 times. Very cool. At this point, I took a quick sneak peek at the final boss. Tried the staring technique, but still nothing. So I backtracked and analyzed the version of it without any lists. Instead of using this list, let's use simple numbers. So that list had 4 objects inside of it. So let's say for i in range 4, and then for j in range this doesn't change, and this is again 4. Let's quickly remove all of this and say print i and then j. So now looking only at this loop, it will go from 
This bit got me a little confused, so I decided to zoom out and take it step by step by remembering the basics. Okay, so for i in range 4, this means that i loops from 0 to 4 and 4 is not included. So at first it's 0 and then it runs all of this, then it's 1 and then it runs all of this again, then it's 2, all of this, and 3, all of this. So this whole thing will for sure loop at least three times from zero to four. And since this is a second loop, this can also loop a few times. So now I need to find out how much this whole thing will loop in total. So once i equals zero, this will run for three times. So that's three loops. Once i equals one, this will run for two times. That's two more. So five. When this is three, this will loop once. So six times in total. And when i is three, this becomes four, which doesn't make any sense, which means this will not run. So in total, we should get six lines and two columns. Two columns because we're printing i and then j right next to it. The first three times it runs, i will be zero. The other two times it will be one. And one last time it will be two. Let's see if that's true before we analyze further. First three times it's zero, then it's one, then it's two. Beautiful. Now what the hell is this? So it prints out j as well. When i is equal to zero, j goes from one to four. So three times in total. That's why it's one, two, three. When i is equal to one, this goes goes from 2 to 4, so 2 times in total, from 2 to 3, because 4 is not included. And once i is equal to 2, this runs just one time, from 3 to 4, and so that's why this is 3. Whoa. My brain is working full 100% to understand this. This caused a lot of strain to my noob brain, but I still want it to persist. So now technically, if I add back that list, and then replace this 4 with the length of this list, which is 4, nothing should change. Length list. Length list. This should print out the same exact thing. Boink. Yes. One, two, three, two, three, and three. Let's also print each of the list number. So list i and list j. And let's see what they are with each letter. 84, 24, 84, 99. Okay says nothing. And then there's this if statement that sorts this list from the lowest to the highest value. I should have probably mentioned this way earlier in the video that this whole thing is meant to sort list items from lowest to highest. Well, now you know. Here we have these list items based on the value of i and j. And since they're never the same, the list item will not be the same. So when i is 0, j will be 1. So it will compare this one with this one. Then it's 0 and 2. So it will compare this one and this one and so on. So this whole nested loop thing goes through the list with i and j being different indexes for different items in this list. And then here we compare these two. So let's take the first example, i is 0 and j is 1. So this says if 84 is more than 24, do all of this. If it's not, don't do anything. In this case, 84 is more than 24. So first there's a new variable that gets assigned to 84. So basically it saves 84 somewhere else, not on this list. Then it says that li, which is 84, is equal to lj, which is 24. So now we have 24, 24, 99, 10. And then here, 24 gets assigned to t. So now it's 24, 84, 99, and 10. So basically all of this switched places of these two in this list. And once it goes through the whole list, because it compares each one with each one, this list should now be sorted from the lowest number to the highest number. Let's see if that's true. Print L. 1024 84 99. <sighs> I'm not a noob.